Gotham Season 1, Episode 14, entitled The Fearsome Dr. Crane. I just got done watching the episode, and overall, I gotta say that, sure, maybe I didn't enjoy it as much as last week's episode, but still, I like this episode. I did. It started with, we saw this guy tied to a chair on top of a roof of a building, and he was pushed off by an unknown killer, and he was hung. So throughout the episode, it wasn't probably as much as you would think as far as what was going on in this episode. A lot went on in this episode, but throughout it, you saw little sprinkles here and there of people being kidnapped. They found out that they were all in a support group for people with phobias, and they were being killed by whatever their phobia was. So Bullock especially was investigating that. He even went to a meeting and he gave a fear of himself. Now, I don't know if this was an actual fear. It's it's reasonable enough to think it is. Or he could have just been making it up to join the group and, and tell a story. But if it was true, I do like seeing that side of him a little bit more vulnerable. That that story he told of his fear of, of dying in an alley alone somewhere it is pretty scary. But I thought when we found out who the guy was, I mean, technically we saw the, his face at the beginning, so it wasn't a mystery to us. But when you see that is, in fact, this guy, uh, Todd, I guess his name is, I thought it was a little too sloppy and obvious for him to kidnap the woman who is running the, the group. And he did it in the middle of the session where he ran off when he was telling his story, which seemed to be a genuine and real fear for him, it had to do with his son. He ran off and she went after him to console him, and then they just never came back. And you see that he kidnapped her and just drove off. And it's like, well, he knew that a cop was there, first of all. That's what they say, that he knew that Bullock was a cop. And he did it in front of everybody. Like, it's just... Did, did he stop and think about any of this? Does he expect to get away with any of this? There's no way. It, it's impossible. So I don't know how intelligent this guy is. I thought it was a little interesting that... Because at first, I didn't understand, like, what exactly he was doing. Sure, he was killing people based on their fear, but for what? And then we found out that he was taking... Uh, the blood from them when they're at their most scared. Because I guess your body produces, or maybe this isn't true, who knows, your body produces this weird type of uh, toxin, you could say. So clearly this is the beginnings of how the fear gas gets created. I guess he's going to use each and every one of these uh, pieces of blood from different people and create it. So when he goes to drown this woman, uh, before that, his son showed up, Jonathan Crane. So yes, this is the Scarecrow's father that we're seeing in full effect. So it's, it's no wonder where Jonathan Crane is going to get his habits and traits from. So, I mean, his plot, this whole plot wasn't... So much of the episode that I could really pick it apart and probably not like it. It was there. I I I can tell what they're doing with the Scarecrow character and saying that it, it's a generational thing. I mean, I don't find that to be the most interesting thing. I, I kind of just like Jonathan Crane being as mysterious and, and just crazy just because that's who he is. But okay, fine, you know, I, I can't really compare this to the stuff that I know of these characters. The show is doing their own thing. I'm not going to complain too hard on it. I will say that I was impressed and surprised that this guy uh, wasn't caught by the end of the episode and will be here next week, so that was surprising. Uh, something else that I liked, something that carried over from last week, was the fact that Bullock and Gordon basically have to watch their own ass. They have to be careful around all of these cops. Like when Bullock was on the roof of that crime scene, and the cops were all looking at him all weird, and 
And this is a, a, a tricky situation to be almost uh, most wanted in the precinct of your fellow cops. It's just, it's a situation, it's a messed up situation that I, that I enjoy seeing that, how corrupted the police is in Gotham. And then we see Gordon go back to Barbara's apartment to drop the keys off and he finds Selena Kyle sort of squatting in there. And I thought that was an amusing scene, her trying to hide from him. And she told Gordon now, not only Bruce, but she tells Gordon that she was lying about seeing the Wayne killer. And she just jumps off of the, the, the high building. I don't know how she survives that. I know Catwoman could do it, but her at that age, I guess she's always been able to pull something that, like that off. I enjoyed when Gordon went to Bruce and talked to him. And when Bruce basically cut him off and said, look, I release you from that promise that you made to me. Because honestly, you haven't really been doing that good of a job at it. But you can't blame Gordon. There's so much crime and so much shit going on in Gotham. It's not his fault that he hasn't found the killer yet. But the fact that Bruce is saying, I'm going to go off and do this on my own. Wow. Uh, he's a bit young. I've said that before, he's a bit young to be the way that he is, but there's something interesting about it. I I want to see what exactly he has planned or what exactly he's going to do on his own as far as all this. And it was something I didn't see coming. Now, when Gordon has dinner with Leslie Tompkins, I liked seeing her come back. I liked that she got herself dolled up and was was looking forward to this dinner and then Gordon brought up the case first and it was a little awkward because he had to admit he did want to see her. I like where the relationship is going right now. It's at the very beginning, it's very early, but I just, I like seeing these two together. And I love that Barbara hasn't been seen in two weeks. Awesome, like this show, look how much better this show has gotten since Barbara has been gone. Now I know, I know, Gordon is supposed to end up with Barbara, but this is one change from the comics that I, I wouldn't mind. Have him stay with Leslie Tompkins, let them be a couple, they're so great together, and Leslie Tompkins is gorgeous. What are you going to do to get him away from her and go back with Barbara? I, I don't, I can't see it happening at this point. Some of the side plots, we had Edward Nigma being suspended because he is going through the, the corpses in the morgue, even though that's not his job, he deals with forensics. Now, I'm, I'm getting to like Nigma a lot more. The last few episodes, I feel like I've been higher on him. Sure, the riddles are still there, I don't mind that as much, but he's just weird, he's quirky, and even though he's doing things that aren't ethical or, or shouldn't be right, I guess. He seems like he wants to help. He's weird, but he wants to help the case. He wants to find stuff out. I'm curious to see uh, what where he goes from here, because I still don't understand his relationship with Mrs. Kringle. Again, I don't know if she likes him or what. She's so back and forth whenever she talks to him. And let's talk about Fish Mooney, because Fish Mooney uh, she calls Maroni, and she tells him that the Penguin has been lying, has been playing the both of them. So not only is it a surprise to him that she's still alive, but this whole Penguin thing, I this was some of my favorite stuff of the episode, where he brought Penguin to a cabin out in the middle of nowhere, and they were talking back and forth, and Penguin was clearly... Uh, uncomfortable and nervous and he didn't really know what was going on. He grabbed a gun and they had that standoff and they were both telling each other a secret. I didn't know where that was going and then when you found out the gun had blanks, wow! I didn't expect Moroni to get the better of that. I, I thought Penguin was going to kill him. And then you get Moroni putting Penguin in a car and about to crush it. Now Penguin this is him at full effect, begging and pleading, but it wasn't working. Maroni was too smart for it. He was saying, no, I'm done. And 
you saw Penguin in the car and it was being crushed. And I'm just sitting there half thinking to myself, they're not killing Penguin. It's just, it's not going to happen. There was one part of my brain just telling myself that, yelling that in my head. And then there was the other side that was saying, holy crap, this car is crushing really, really close right now. Like, it's almost completely crushed. And he's calling Maroney. That didn't work. And he's yelling and hollering. And I'm just sitting there like, holy fuck, are they really about to kill the penguin? I, I, they had me. I, I was bought until he finally called the construction guy and told him about Falcone and how this would go horrible for him, so he stopped it at the very, very last second. Wow. Penguin somehow finds a way. It's funny because Penguin is one of the bad guys, technically, but I didn't want him to die. I, it, I just I don't want to see that character die. Obviously, in the back of your head, you're thinking, he can't die, he's going to be the Penguin, but I remember reading a couple of weeks ago one of the producers saying, oh, just because certain characters are who they're supposed to be, don't expect us not to kill any of them. So I guess that in the back of my head too, you never know. But that that whole plot, side plot going on in this episode I thought was great. I really enjoyed that. And uh, seeing the penguin being woken up by those church ladies and then going on their bus... And just the look on his face at the window while they were singing was priceless. The funniest moment of the episode. And then we come to the very end because Fish Mooney is on this boat. It, it's her getaway. And then all of a sudden gunfire starts going off and she doesn't know what's going on. The captain comes in and tries to hide her. He gets shot and dead. And then some random guy shows up. I mean, I think he's random. Sometimes watching these episodes week to week, I forget certain things. So I don't know. If we've seen him before, let me know in the comments below. But to me, I didn't know who he was. And he was growling. And he looked pissed. And then Fish seemed to recognize him. And she started growling. It was weird. Like, they both turned into animals. And then ran at each other. And then that's how the episode ended. Now... I'm sorry, as much as I did like this episode, as much as I was praising a lot of things about it, that was stupid. It's just, it was it was very goofy and cartoony. I know it's te it's technically tension building and it's, uh, and it's uh, trying to get me to want to know what happens next, but it's just, it was, it was silly. And I almost just don't care. It could be a red herring for all I know. Maybe they're about to have sex with each other. Maybe that's really what's going on. I don't care. But everything else I enjoyed. Uh, Gotham is looking up. Judging from the previews for next week's episode, it looks pretty interesting too. So, anyways guys, let me know in the comments below if you saw tonight's episode as well. What did you think of it? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later.